Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we continue our series into uh, Rex and DB2 programming and uh, today Sebastian is inviting one of his friends, uh, Henry, to uh, work with him on making the travel application work on ZOS with Rex and DB2. Over to you Sebastian and Henry. Hey, I'm here with Henry, he's a ZOS wizard and he helped me to um, add new functions to our application. Yeah, and I will I will guide you guys through it to see what we have done. What we have done is um, hooked up some little... Oh, that is nice. I'm already logged on. Okay, now we, we already have our databases in with the uh, flight data from OpenFlight. And now we try to... Uh, call some APIs from the internet on ZOS. Yes. For that we used um, just the socket programming in Rex, which is a nice example to reuse for other things as well. Um, instead of live coding it, I'm going to guide you through the code that we've written. This is the basic get. Um, so we are going to go to this website with this API endpoint. Um, for argument's sake, we're only getting two hits from the website just so we get some data in. Um, this is all some setup stuff. Um, over here, um, we are initializing a socket so that we can make the connection to the remote web server. We need to determine who we are. So we get our current IP address from our own host. Um, this is where we create the socket. And the, the resulting values from this call to socket will give us a return code um, and the socket ID. And of course, if the return code is greater than zero, then something went wrong and we better quit. Um, over here, I will scroll this to the top probably. Oh, it's on page. Why is this always on page? Great. Yes. All right. That's better. Where were we? So we've initialized the socket here. Um, we are getting the IP address that belongs to the DNS entry. Then we need to set some some magic settings to the some options to the socket. Um, the most important one is uh, this one here, where we make sure that the TCP IP stack will take care of all the ASCII EBCDIC translations because unfortunately the web server on the remote end does not speak EBCDIC. Um, over here we're going to connect, so we're making a connection to the HTTP port on that server. Um, do some error handling here, just in case it went wrong. And um, then we start to, um, well, to, to program in um, the HTTP stream of data to get the, get the file. So first we need to tell it that we are getting you know, the web file that we specified. We are talking the HTTP 1.1 protocol and we have to make sure that there is no space between HTTP 1.1 and the, yeah. the line feed. That a took us about a day, a day to fix, <laughs> um, but, but now it works. So we're sending that data, then we just you know, create the full HTTP request. We tell it which host we want to talk to. Uh, we tell it which user agent we are. I think we should change this to, say, Leipzig mainframe, because yeah. then in the access logs for that thing, they will see that the agent is Rex from the mainframe, but we can change that. Um, we're telling the remote server we accept everything, JSONs, text files, binaries, whatever. Then we send the final control line feed, carriage return line feed thing, um, and then we start receiving data in. Um, all the rest here we will maybe cover later after we run the demo, but that is just parsing the response and making sure that if it's a chunked response, um, that we are doing successive receives until we have all the data present. Uh, that's just this bottom bit. Here we, um, we, we take a look at what the, the server is telling us, how much data it's going to send, and then our socket is just going to pull in all the data. So all this Rex code is of course pretty cool, but it's far cooler to see it working. Yeah, let's execute X. So 
know where the connection went all right. We get a mm -hmm. return code of zero. Press enter. It, it shows us here at the top that there are 1991 bytes in the content of the result. Mm -hmm. um, it does look a bit funky. This is actually a JSON, but due to like character encodings, it shows as a colon colon where it should probably be like a bracket open and then the curly bracket open. Um, but this is the whole data coming in. That's it. And that's it. Yes. Thank you, Henry. You're welcome. It was great fun to code this in yes, between sir. the sessions. I had a ton of fun as well. It was pretty awesome. Let's do, let's do this more often. Yeah, of course. Wow, so this was pretty awesome. Uh, I really liked uh, what you guys have done there. Thank you, Sebastian, and say, thank you, uh, Henry. I think we all learned a ton. And I uh, would like you all viewers to uh, give us feedback. What do you think? And uh, I, I think it's surprising how easy this all is. And uh, maybe it's now um, up to you guys to show us how, what improvements you would bring. By the way, all the code is in the description below this video on, the, on GitHub. And so we'll link to it there. And uh, in appreciation for the work of uh, Sebastian and, and uh, Henry, I would like you to smash that uh, subscribe button and smash that thumbs up button and uh, and uh, give us a lot of comments below this video because uh, this is how people get motivated to do more and more. Anyway, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the Motion Explained Film channel and see you soon. Goodbye.